to the Pitch Music Cards and Invasion of Manning's Social Network, this is Dark King, and today we're going to do another Let's Watch Dash Red Reaction. Today is going to be Sora vs. Pete in Kid of Hearts vs. Kid Idris for Death Battle. Anyway, the usual scanner prize only for, uh, only for pictures. Ah! Only for criticism purposes. There, was it that hard? Ugh. No interest in compression end whatsoever, buddy, buddy, wow, let's get to it. And but this episode of Death Battles brought to you by War Robots, the tactical 6v6 multiplayer game for uh -huh. iOS, Android, and Fire Not OS. This. The game's like if Wiz's love for science and my love for weapons had a baby, wrapped in so, great 3D graphics. Did they say that in mid? Pick up the mid episode that you know us they're down. starting Install this War one. Install Robots now and get a huge starter pack of the Leo Robot, one King weapon, three Molot weapons, 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. Okay. If the fate of the universe is at stake, the last person you should trust to save it is a naive teenager with magical weapons they don't understand. But <laughs> everybody does it anyway. Like Sora, the T-blade wielding savior of Kingdom Hearts. And Pit, the angel warrior from Kid Icarus. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Well, let's face it, these two are kind of the last resort anyway. <laughs> find out who will win a death battle. Once upon a time, there was a small child, full of promise, named Sora. And he lived on the one and only mm. Destiny Island. Sora and his friends Ryu grew up Sora for Smash? athletic skills mm. by playing sports, I don't think so. Final Fantasy characters who don't judge Sora's fashion choices. Wait a minute, what the hell are Final Fantasy characters doing there? A hint <laughs> of things to come. For the longest time, the residents of Destiny Island lived a peaceful life. But it wasn't long until a soulless embodiment of evil would invade the island. This because of body course. But the arrival of these creepy crawlers wasn't the only surprise. Alongside the darkness came light in the form of a keyblade, which is the key to fixing everything. Super Cute. subtle. This keyblade in particular was known as the Kingdom Key, and was drawn to Sora thanks to his pure heart. With the <laughs> Kingdom Key, Sora had the means to combat the Heartless. By unlocking doors? Well, yes, the Keyblade can get past almost any lock out there. But despite not having a long, sharp edge, it's a surprisingly deadly sword. It's a key, it's a sword, and it's also a wand. <laughs> Sora can use it to cast all sorts of magic spells like a wizard. He can even shoot a laser beam all the way to the moon. Unfortunately, despite his newfound weapon, the Heartless were overwhelming. The darkness washed over Destiny Island, and just like that, it was gone. gone. But thanks yeah. to cosmic reasons, Sora wound up face to face <laughs> with Goofy and Donald Duck. Yep, he ended up in the most magical place on Earth, Disney. If you're confused, don't worry. You are not hallucinating. Somehow, in some way, this impossibility exists. Turns out, <laughs> while Goofy and Donald have been lovable cartoons for decades, they're also world hopping warriors. Oh my god, this is the best thing ever! From then on, Sora teamed up with his new friends to lock the doors to the hearts of worlds, saving them from the heartless grip. And he wasn't even old enough to get a driver's license. While Sora <sighs> may not have been strong enough to save Destiny Island, he quickly learned an enormous amount of talents perfect for beating back the darkness. Including some genuine ass kicking magic, like shooting fireballs, freezing baddies with blizzards, smiting with lightning, and more! He can reflect projectiles, manipulate time, magnetize objects, and even alter gravity. He's got a bunch of other magic attacks, but my favorite is Ragnarok, which fires a bunch of homing energy beams. And I guess he's got some magic abilities that don't involve beating monsters up, which I think is pretty lame, but Wiz insists we talk about it. Thanks to the Kingdom Key Sword, he can use spells which remove negative effects, including curing his own wounds. He can also glide like Peter Pan and teleport like Figment. I eh, still don't know if we should call cool. it a sword, but Sora can make it even better with keychains. They can even transform the whole Keyblade into more powerful versions with way more badass names, like Oathkeeper. With all <laughs> his abilities, Sora battled the Heartless. I have never played the uh, Kingdom Hearts. Them. Xanort. He even defeated Xanort's Heartless and his nobody. 
Oh, that's kind of harsh, Wiz. Why are you calling him a nobody? He's definitely somebody. No, see, a nobody is a somebody without a heart. But a heartless isn't a somebody or a nobody, though they may have been a somebody filled with anger. Like Scar from The Lion King. Well, I'm a somebody that's really, really confused. <laughs> but to save all worlds, Sora found he had to be insanely strong, fast, and tough. He's speedy enough to run up a building, and quick enough to dodge magic lightning. Not just magic lightning, real legitimate lightning from the sky. A feat which could only take mere milliseconds. Sora put all that speed to good use once by perfectly blocking hundreds of lasers from damn near every angle in just a few seconds. So it's safe to say he's no slouch. As for his strength, not only has he cut through giant building-like structures with ease, he's launched them as projectiles. Though gravity is in flux here, a building this size normally weighs around 100,000 pounds. He's held back <laughs> two of Cerberus's heads and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hercules. You know, the demigod who threw a giant rock monster into space? Although this titan's shape is too inconsistent to scale, by treating him as a series of cones made of granite, we can estimate his weight as over 1,600 tons. That's like throwing 200 T-Rexes into the sky. <laughs> oh yeah, Herc is really, really the strong. Off. And Sora can take that a That was one him. heck of a no with the stunt. Honestly, Sora's ability to take a hit might be one of his strongest characteristics. He survived the jaws of Cerberus, ancient Chinese dragons, being shot by a musket, and hell, the fires of Hades. But he isn't without his downfalls. While he's strong in his own right, he relies a lot on his friends. Like, all the goddamn time. He can't even enter his fancy drive forms, which boost his power and give him an extra keyblade, without help from Goofy and Donald. So in a broad scope, he's fairly limited on his own. No big deal, though. Luckily for Sora, most locks only need one key. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if that was profound or just stupid. <laughs> You're stupid. The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down there's a light that never goes out. Let us return to okay, the now. Past. To Get an age long pit. ago, Dot that. when gods and man lived together in harmony. How long ago was this? Uh, 25 years ago. What? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the kingdom of Angel Land was yeah, ruled by two goddesses. I think goddesses. that's when Kid Icarus Haldina, came out. the goddess of light, and Medusa, the goddess of darkness. Who pretty much treated everyone like crap by turning people into statues and destroying their crops. Oh my god, the Run series, but still applies. From a being who holds the title Goddess of Darkness. She's just doing her job. Angered by these misdeeds, Palutina transformed Medusa into an ugly, one-eyed, parcel-tongued monster and banished her to the Dark Underworld. Talk about throwing shade! Long story short, Medusa waged war with Palutina, who summoned the greatest hero Angel Land has ever known. Hit! My arrows will stop that, Apicus Maximus! No, 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 <laughs> definitely not that one. This one. Uh, hang on. Greatest hero ever? More like his mom needs to drop him off at elementary school. Don't let looks fool you. Pitt may seem young, but like he's a captain of the resort. army. Keepers of the peace and personal guards to Lady Palutina herself. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me this Cupid-looking kid is the captain of an army? Well, at least he can fly with those wings. All right, that's pretty cool. Actually, <laughs> not really. <he> can't. <laughs> what? Look, he's flying right there. Well, Pitt may have superhuman abilities, but he can't actually fly on his own. Thankfully, Palutina regularly grants him mystic wings, which do allow flight, though they can only exist for up to five minutes. After that, they burst into flame, sending Pitt careening to a horrible end. Holy yeah. shit! Ouch. So the captain of an angel army doesn't have his own working angel wings. That's what you're telling me? Yeah, it's a little strange, but don't try to bring it up. Wow, well, that Pit was why Medusa ignored him anyway, the first time around. Medusa, and everyone lived happily ever after. Just kidding, Medusa came back 25 years later, looking better than ever, by the way. And this time, Hades came along to mess things up, too. As best of the Icarus army, Pit has some extensive training ever. under his belt. <laughs> How else would all these soldiers oh, save Palutina from I a sudden invasion of... I love to see him and Hercules Hades. Vegetables? Uh, have uh, but what's a soldier uh, his weapons? well teaming up basically he is well known for his archery skills and shows oh, it's been so fun of choice the palutina bow 
This bow uses awesome laser arrows that can actually be guided by Pit. And if his enemies get close, Pit can split the bow into two short blades for quick deadly slices. Now that's a practical weapon. He is highly skilled with several classes of weapons. His arsenal has been imbued with the strength and power of the gods, making humans incapable of wielding them. These <laughs> range from orbitars, like floaty shoulder cannons that can also block attacks, to blades, cannons, claws, hammers, staves, clubs, and weaponized tattoos. Ah, oh, I wish my tattoo was a weapon. Uh, anyway, all these weapons were forged by Mentos, the god of forge. Dentos. Dentos, the Freshmaker! And the guy who also crafted Pit's ultimate weapons, the three sacred treasures. Hidden away in three sealed caskets, the sacred treasures consist of Angel Land's mightiest weapons, which can only be used by the most heroic and worthy of heroes. The mirror shield reflects projectiles. The wings of Pegasus give Pit unrestricted flight and improved speed. And the arrow of light is the ultimate weapon of the gods that can murder basically anything. The yeah, the question of is. Light is absolutely the deadliest weapon in Pit's arsenal, and increases in power. Can that arrow Pit's go to Sora's defenses? And when yes. all three treasures come together, Pit is granted the legendary silver armor. Uh, you uh, tapping into mustache booze, Wiz? That's not <laughs> silver. It's gold. Well, colors are different in heaven, I guess. Weird. Well, Pitt's learned several abilities throughout his adventures, like healing, dropping mines, and making his arrows invisible. And all of his skills came in handy. Not only did he defeat Medusa, but he's taken on alien pirates, a space kraken, and the god of death, Thanatos. At one point when Thanatos attacked a village, he launched a large boulder which Pitt obliterated so thoroughly it was completely pulverized in mid-air. Wait a minute, how are those Trojan horse Star Wars walkie thingies not tipping over? <laughs> stick. Pulverization is defined as reducing an object to dust, which certainly applies here. To determine the force necessary to do so, we first need the size of that boulder. For that, we'll compare the boulder to those pillars. Oh, uh, here comes the math. Strap on your pocket protectors, nerds. Thanatos, when standing near to pit, appears to be about 11 feet 6 inches tall. By comparing his height to the pillars, we've determined them to be 18 feet tall. By comparing that to the boulder, mm -hmm. it's clear it has a diameter of 115 inches. To pulverize a stone this large, Pit Strike must have outputted energy equal to nearly 1,600 pounds of TNT. Damn! Little angel kid can dish it out! Pit's also incredibly quick. He was able to maneuver, react, and fly from the top of these clouds to the Lunar Sanctum in less than 40 seconds. Despite looking like one, that's no moon. It's a space station, orbiting the <laughs> Earth at a similar altitude to the International Space Station. The average distance from the ISS to the highest cloud layers is about 242 miles, meaning Pit must have flown around 21,600 miles per hour. That's Mach 28! Suck That's our skip velocity. <laughs> Not only that, Pit dodged a laser which covered this distance in a fraction of a second. Most likely okay, so... a little over 90 million miles per hour. Oh my god. Okay, so Pit is basically really the Death Star. With Pit's superhuman durability, <laughs> so Pit is almost if god, not as fast as, as Sora. Any normal man into an angel? Well, a dead man, yes. In his Hades, <laughs> <laughs> the god of the underworld, Pit took a devastating blow that sent him plummeting at least 2000 feet. Given Pit's weight, the impact of that fall would be over 8 tons of force. And he was fine. This Hades guy can cut through giant diamond spires, so a hit from him could be as powerful as nearly 30 tons of TNT. Of course, while Pitt may be formidable, he's not perfect. He has been tricked into losing fights multiple times, and often relies on assistance from his godly allies. But this kick-ass angel isn't afraid to charge headfirst into a fight, even with his wings on fire. In the name of the goddess Palatina, defender of all that is good! Oh, the that grand. Made to face the light. All right, the okay, interesting. Set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, all this yep. slice and vegetables is get me made up so that. So, just pause it now. Yeah, anyway. So, this is an interesting one. For what it seems, I'd say Pit wins. If, oh, if not only because of the silver armor. Very tough, but Pit seems to be tougher. And, uh, well, the damage output is. Well. Hard to compare. They. 
They're both quite strong. But... I don't know. Like I said, hard to tell. Well, I'm going with Pit on this one. And like I was saying, I like it. How I can team up between uh, now, you're probably bit, uh, between Kid Icarus and Hades and Hercules Hades. Well, Blue Apron is oh, the best metal viewers that the jokes, the cringe. If you visit blueapron.com oh, slash metal, fun. so check out this week's menu and oh. get your $30 off Seriously, at blueapron.com slash metal. Both of them, but they're right awesome. Now, it's time for anyway, boy, boy, I'm done. Let's dance. So, we're going to the arena. Okay. Wee! Go get him, pal! <laughs> what? What he said? So, who's where am I kicking this time? You know, fun fact, until they rebooted uh, DuckTales, I've never had problems understanding Sorry, what Donald said. But, yeah. Let's see. So yeah, he has a silver armor. There's no help. Sound effect. You can teleport? Mind blown. Let's see what you think of this. Okay, ultimate moves. Let's see. But he couldn't beat Sora's strength, toughness, and speed. Pit may have dodged a laser moving 90 million miles per hour, but Sora's reaction speed was quick enough to dodge natural lightning. A lightning bolt's return stroke, which constitutes the bright flash, moves at around 220 million miles per hour, over twice as fast as Pit. That, combined with his teleporting and time manipulation powers, meant Sora was yeah, just too quick for Pit feeling. to land very many big hits. Plus, when Sora shot that Keyblade Beam to the moon, it took one second flat. That's 1.28 times the speed of light, much faster than anything Pit's reacted to before. Of course, Pit did have enough weapons to keep Sora busy, 
but Sora's impressive and wide-ranging magical arsenal provided multiple counters for pretty much anything Pit threw at him, including superior healing techniques. Hey, remember that building Sora cut through? Slicing it up like Swiss cheese was impressive enough, but this building was completely made of stone from top to bottom, and Sora cut through seven at once! These buildings may have been composed of a modest stone like granite, which has a minimum shearing strength of 14 megapascals. In comparison to Sora's height, each building was about 23 feet tall. By measuring Sora's largest slash huh. and the distance cut through all seven buildings, we can determine Sora's striking energy to equal, at minimum, 78 tons of TNT. That's way more than Pitt's boulder pulverizing feet. No wonder this guy beat Herc. Speaking of which, let's compare some of the strongest beings Sora and Pitt have taken hits from. The amount of energy needed for Hercules to throw that rock titan into space had to have been around 24 megatons of TNT, whereas Hades strikes were equivalent to only 30 tons at best. So Pitt had never survived anything close to Sora's strongest attacks. Just by numbers alone, Sora's strength, speed, and durability just outclassed Pitt. And the Keyblade by itself had a way more impressive track record than any of Pitt's weapons. You might say it was the key to this fight. And when really? we hit them together, one of them was bound to be a Sora loser. The winner the is Bonds! Sora. Oh, the Bonds! Thanks for watching. Anyway, the who's next? Commentary on this episode by clicking the box right over there. And thanks to McLeod Gaming for letting us use their sprites in this battle. You can check out their latest game and the music used in the battle in the links in the description. It's getting freaky. freaky. Uh, oh, Wrath of the Hill versus. Well, then there's Frank. Ah, right, Kimberly on Gang of Blank. What's the name of uh, You know, the, photogra for the photographer in the... You know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name for some reason, but you know what I mean. So, we're going for the zombie hunters. Interesting. Anyway, the image made sense. The fight was well choreographed. And the sprites are excellent. Got it, met. Nice job. So, people, I hope you enjoyed the episode, the reaction, and, and everything else. Hope you had a good time. And until next time, forget to like, subscribe, and, well, you know the drill. Until then, I'll see you around. Also, don't forget the stupid bell. Ah, damn you, you two. Ta-ta!